What's in a name? Everything. The power of a name has long been immortalized in prose, poetry, and history. It is your face to the world, your ambassador of quality that reflects your ideals and aspirations. Thompson's, a name, a family, a tradition of excellence. So it is with Thompson's Buick GMC dealership at 55 Placerville Drive, home of new and used Buick and GMC cars, trucks, and SUVs. At Thompson's, each of our professional and friendly sales staff are here to meet or exceed your highest expectations. And our professional staff and factory trained and certified technicians will keep your car, truck, or SUV running in perfect condition. That's Thompson's Buick GMC, where you are always treated like family. Coming up on California Country, See how one chef and farmer are keeping it all in the family. Then we're getting the scoop on a new kind of ice cream. And meet a man who is putting fruit to work. Plus, we've got some summertime produce tips for you. It's all ahead and it starts now. Welcome to California Country. I'm your host, Tracy Sellers. You know, one of the most special parts about being a farmer is seeing how chefs use your produce. And down along the Central Coast, we saw one very special connection between a farmer and a chef. Central Coast, they're blessed with picture-perfect postcard weather, breathtaking scenery, and a variety of agriculture, all of which have contributed to the success of Gold Coast Farms. Well, the family farming operation Gold Coast was started by my father, Ron Burke, and his partner, Bob Espinola, and they started farming in 1978, and they started farming with lettuce and broccoli, and, and then evolved into spinach and cilantro, cauliflower, strawberries. Uh, we do a few specialty items like the grapes and some sweet corn and pumpkins, things like that in the summer. But the, the bulk of what we do is broccoli, cilantro, spinach, cauliflower. Today, Gary and his dad, Ron, run the farm that remains as diversified as ever. They grow a variety of crops, including a couple hundred acres of spinach in Santa Maria that goes to restaurants and grocery stores across the country. They also grow more than a thousand acres of broccoli that they custom harvest and ship to several large restaurant chains and cater to whatever they might want. Short stocks, tall stocks, no stocks, you name it and they'll grow it. And another big crop the family grows these days is also one of the tiniest, in size that is, cilantro. They're growing about 500 acres of it and they supply some of the biggest Mexican chain restaurants in the country. But no matter what crop they're harvesting, they know one chef in town that will whip up a new and exciting recipe that the family will enjoy. And he should know, since he's part of the family. Meet Chef Rick. Chef Rick is my brother-in-law. Uh, chef is married to my sister, so yes, we definitely work with Chef Rick. <laughs> Look at that. Broccoli, cauliflower, and spinach pizza. This is the uh, grilled salmon, peach, shrimp, spinach, ginger, and sesame salad. Rick is, is, has a very creative mind for food. You know, he, I mean, he is from the South, but he's cooked all over the country, and so his food is very eclectic. It's very um, spice-driven, and it's, uh, it's very interesting food, and so he always has a unique take on uh, how to, you know, prepare things. Chef Rick is owner and executive chef of his aptly named restaurant, Chef Rick's. And his up-tempo cooking is a blend of his culinary roots having grown up in Southern Louisiana, mixed in with the Southern California influence that now comes primarily from the seasonal produce that his family provides him pretty much every day now. Hey, who ordered the broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, and cilantro pizza? Yeah. You guys? Bring it up. <laughs> to get vegetables, to get everything uh, as fresh as possible it, it has always been a, 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 a point of mine. So. 
to, and so to, to marry into it and, and uh, you know have them bring it every time I, you know, they come in is, is beautiful. So <laughs> brought the wine. Oh, you're gonna drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> they may not be producing broccoli wine, but the Burke family is in fact producing wine. In the early 90s, they planted wine grapes in the region, and then in 1994, they began producing wine under their own label, Costa de Oro, which is Spanish for Gold Coast, by the way. They recently opened their own tasting room, where they produce about 6,500 cases a year now. And while as winemakers they get most of the accolades, they give almost all of the credit to their surroundings. For them, producing wine is all about location, location, location. This valley runs wide open to the ocean and we get this huge marine influence of fog and cool air that comes into the valley. And so even though we're so far south compared to Napa and the inland part of Sonoma and Mendocino County, we're actually cooler than any of those growing areas. And that's why Chardonnay and Pinot Noir can do so well here. Um, we always sort our fruit. The fruit comes in, up on the table and then we can hand sort it. And the main thing that we're uh, working with this year is just sorting out any um, berries that have seen extreme heat and have any heat damage, which would be you know, excessive shrivel or raisiny. It's picking out at about two tons per acre right now. So it's holding now. It's holding at two tons per acre, yeah. So we're gonna be good as far as the yield goes. And um, we'll probably finish uh, tomorrow with the Pinot Noir. So from making wine to winning over customers, to feeding families across the country with their plethora of produce, this farming family is proving you can do it all and enjoy the fruits of your labor along the way too. For California Country, I'm Tracy Sellers. And if you're down in Santa Maria, you can check out their tasting room almost any time. They're open daily, so check it out if you get a second. Coming up next, we're seeing how one man has taken the motto of healthy employees make wealthy companies to an entirely new level. Welcome back to California Country. So by now we've probably all heard the phrase farm to table, but what about farm to desk? So how familiar does this sound to you? You're at work, you're hungry, you're tired, and eating healthy is really the last thing on your mind? Well, what if you could get a virtual farmer's market delivered to your desk every day? With the lure of junk food right at our fingertips, the thought of healthy desk eating may sound impossible, right? Well, not if you're Bay Area entrepreneur Chris Middlestad. During the dot-com era of the 1990s, Chris saw firsthand just how unhealthy workplace dining had become and decided change was in order and it was time to put fruit to work. We asked people what they wanted to see most, and they said, gosh, if we could eat something healthy so we could avoid this junk food, that would make our lives a lot better. So my friend and I thought, well, why not deliver just something simple as, as fresh fruit and see how that works. To get his grassroots business up and going, Chris goes to every measure, even dressing up like a banana on the streets of San Francisco, all to be taken seriously. You know, we like your banana day, sir. Free banana from the fruit guys? Sure. We deliver fruit to offices, keep employees healthy at work. Free banana from the fruit guys, deliver thank fruit you. to offices. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank yeah, you grab sir. a banana if you like, free banana day. A simple concept to some, but also a hard sell for some of us. 
Studies show that more than 70% of us eat at our desks several times a week and not so healthy food either, which is where Chris and his staff of fruit fanatics come in. Companies sign up for the service where a box full of a variety of farm fresh fruit is at your doorstep, or in this case, at your desk every week. From Fortune 500 companies to small family-run businesses, all are jumping on the bandwagon of bringing healthy brain food to the workplace. A lot of the things they quote are that it, you know, it reduces absenteeism. You know, people are seem more energetic and more productive. Um, you know, that there's the, the culture of candy and sort of that two o'clock sugar crash just kind of goes away. And those things, they they seem small, but they can actually have a really big impact on the way a workforce is performing or behaving. Hey, hi, Steve. How are you? Great. It's good to see you. Good to see you again, man. Thanks. Come on back. All right. So yeah, we've got um, Concord pears featured in the box this week, and, and we did a little newsletter on it. it. Talks a little bit about the history of the Concord pear. It's actually a really unique pear because it's um, it's able to be eaten firm. Uh, you don't have to actually wait completely until it gets completely soft. It's not an astringent pear when it's firm. So it's a great tasting pear. We thought you'd really enjoy it. So thank you. I yeah. can't wait. Yeah. People love it. Well, we at one time used to get some not as healthy uh, stuff in here, you know, donuts and things like that. And ever since we started getting the fruit, I think people have really enjoyed it a lot more. This is a Satsuma okay. Mandarin, and these come from a guy that we work with down in Port Porterville, California. So, and a great way to eat it, if you want to try, you actually pop your thumb right in the middle of it. It's a little zipper skin, peels right off. It's uh, super easy and. Uh, Delicious and tasty. So right. enjoy. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. I'm from the Midwest, and so we have a lot of the traditional fruits and vegetables out there. Um, a couple weeks ago, they started putting persimmons in our box, and so it was great. So I thought, oh, here's a new uh, fruit to try, and so. Um, I did, and I loved it, and um, so it's, it's been neat to kind of then spread the word around the office and everyone will try something new or something different, and that's always, it's been a lot of fun. The Fruit Guys company now delivers about a quarter of a million pieces of fruit a week to companies all over California. Chris says he tries to source new varieties of fruits all from small family farms, which are the inspiration for keeping fresh fruit ripe for the picking for weary workers, and who are the base of this unique operation. You know, farmers have a, a really big job, right? I mean, they're tasked with growing product, which takes a lot of time throughout the year, and it's hard for them to focus on um, the business growth as much as I think, you know, when you have to do both things, you have to grow your product and sell it, that makes it really hard. So we, we become a help to the farmers where we're buying a lot of their product and, and then taking it to the customers, um, you know, where, they, where they're located. And we then focus on the things that we do very well, you know, which is communication, delivery, obviously, finding the best pieces of produce to put together in the boxes and then getting it to those clients as well. Part of what we want to do is, is find uh, unique varieties of fruit as much as we can. So every season that we go into, we're looking for different kinds of fruit that we can put in the box. Uh, a lot of times the small growers are the ones that we find are really growing the unique uh, produce that's out there and the, um, you know, the really interesting pieces of fruit as well. So we'll work with uh, Tori Olson up in Gabriel Farms up in Sebastopol during the fall. Uh, he grows these wonderful Asian apple pears that are, are difficult to find in terms of variety and quality from anybody else. Produce partners with the Fruit Guys for more than four years now, Tori Olson of Gabriel Farms in Sebastopol has become a favorite not only of the company that he does business with, but the guys behind the Fruit Guys as well. Well, and it's nice too because they, they try and work with their um, customers, the people that get the Fruit Guys box, they always write a little bit about what we do and try and encourage them you know they did the videos and the stuff like that on their website to try and get people to see like oh well that actually is a real person growing my fruit and it's you know it's it's a much deeper relationship even just at that level in fact the partnership has gone beyond just money and cents and now the fruit guys are as much a part of the farming families as the fruit they grow as part of their new farm stewardship program, the Fruit Guys recently planted trees at Tory's farm and donated bees to him as well. They bought us beehives so we could have our own bees here on the property and 
we didn't have to rely on the you know the the bee person who would just take them and bring them and then leave and you never were sure when the bees were going to be here so we have our own bees now so we'll be able to have our own honey and that's been a goal that I've had for us for a while. The stewardship program is much bigger than Tori's farm. It's all part of Chris's main goal, which is to be a conduit and a link between local farmers and local communities. Understanding where food comes from and how it intersects with their lives is, is important nowadays as life gets more complicated. And I think that as we get farther away from the, the way we produce our food and, and you know, people actually kind of have a, a reverse reaction to that and they want to actually then get closer to it and learn more about it. So in the box, Chris includes descriptions of the fruits, but he also includes recipes. To get some of those recipes, you can check out the link on our website at californiacountry.org. Well, coming up next, we're not kidding around when we tell you this is one of the most unique ice creams we've ever seen. You'll see what I mean coming up next. It's one thing to buy things in boxes and packages and just have it show up. It's another thing to actually know where that is produced and where it's come from and how it's produced. I think it even goes further when, when you have some kind of personal connection to it. Literally farm to table. Literally it's like from the gardens, from the from the dirt. I mean they come straight from that place. The connection, when you make that connection with the farmer, with the growers, it's, it's, it makes for a different feeling when you're cooking. For me now things taste different. Welcome back to California Country. You know, when I mention milk, we automatically think of cows, right? Well, did you know that goat milk is actually the most consumed milk across the globe? Which is why one woman thought of a new idea to enjoy goat milk. One of those hopeful farmers is Donna Pacheco. Her and her family own one of Sonoma's most successful dairies, the Achadina Cheese Company. But you may be surprised at who's actually producing all of that award-winning cheese. We had cows. My father-in-law was a second-generation dairyman and cheesemaker, and so he, we reached a point, we decided to try something new. We saw the goat industry as an up-and-coming uh, prop progress and so we uh, we pursued that a little bit more and uh, sold the cows and bought goats. Today the Pacheco family has more than 1,200 goats all roaming and frolicking on 130 acres of rolling hills and pristine countryside in Petaluma. And it was just that picturesque backdrop that attracted city slicker and Hollywood producer Laura Howard to the area with a unique idea. I just packed up my bags and said I'm done with LA and I want to go find some goats and, and have a go at this. So drove to Sonoma County because that's where you know all the big cheese companies and yogurt companies were. She just said, you know, look, this is what I want to do. I want to make a goat ice cream and and I want to use your milk. And they just had a flavor named af after them. We have a frozen yogurt now called Brownie and Clyde. This is Bubble, Blossom, and Blossom. So Laura left La La Land for the land of Lay Loose, which is the name of her newest project, Goat Milk Ice Cream, the first of its kind on the market. <laughs> ice cream is just the latest product to be derived from the nutrient-rich and naturally lowering calorie goat milk. From cheeses to yogurts, goat milk is gaining in popularity across California. The Golden State has more than 30,000 milking goats, making it tops in the nation. 
All of which doesn't surprise Laura one bit. Goat milk is much easier to digest, so goat milk ice cream, because it's very pure and there's nothing else in it, this is 100% goat's milk, um, is much, much lower in fat. It's very good for new moms, and uh, you know, I'm eating, well, I have a milkshake every day, a goat milk milkshake made from my ice cream every day, so. <laughs> Um, the baby's very happy. Well, I just wanted to make this for you, Tracy, because it's something that is um, maybe not the most obvious way to serve chocolate ice cream, but we take our Lelou's deep chocolate with all Scharf and Burger chocolate, and we'll just make a small one. But this is a great and simple sort of gourmet way to serve it. And this is our yummy olive oil that we smuggled back from, from Italy, actually and you drizzle it with, with the oil, just a little bit, and then finish it with just a little bit of Malden salt sprinkled on top. And it might not sound like something, but try it. It's good. In addition to making her daily milkshake, Laura still makes all of her ice cream herself too. I do love making the chocolate, I think it's so pretty. And her inspiration for all those zany flavors, chocolate cabernet, strawberry darling, and brownie and Clyde, those come from where else but her own backyard. This is Mo. Mo also has had a flavor named after him. The molasses is now called Slow Mo. <laughs> so from the rat race of Hollywood to the world of goat milk ice cream in Sonoma, farmers and city slickers are just plain giddy for goats. And once you try our product, it, it's not what you have expected at all. It's, it's an amazing thing. I get to drive around a lot and just be around happy people. You know, ice cream makes people happy, so how can you go wrong, you know? <laughs> I'm pretty lucky that way. So Laura tells me that they're now selling their goat milk products in more than 1,400 stores nationwide. Way to go, Laura. It's great. Coming up next, we're giving you all the tips on picking the best produce the next time you're at the supermarket. That's next. Today on Food 101, we're going to be talking about how to pick the best produce, and there's nobody better to tell us about that than my friend Greg Corrigan of Rayleigh's, Vice President of Produce and Floral here. So how, first of all, tomatoes. How do you pick the best tomato? Well, tomatoes here, one of our best sellers is the tomato on the vine, as you're seeing right here. So they're grown actually indoors, mm -hmm. so they're most of the time all you got to look for is to make sure there's no blemishes, no cuts, no mm -hmm. scars, but generally they're consistent, good tomatoes. Okay, so now we're on to the melon area. What should we look for like in a good cantaloupe? What are well, we looking for? Well, cantaloupe, again, you, a lot of it's based on the, the skin. You don't want to see any blistering or any okay. wrinkling. You want to see a nice, consistent, round, firm flesh to it. Okay. Um, nice and heavy, dense piece of fruit. Okay. Um, as you notice in here, I think you were gonna. Yeah, but is this bad? I mean, actually, I look at that and go, ooh. It's actually not. Actually, all that is is from where it sat on the ground. Now, what about the honeydew? What are we looking for? I notice a difference in color. Honeydew, you here. can kind of see a little bit of difference in, in ripeness. These mm -hmm. aren't quite as ripe as the deeper, darker one. You'll see this deeper yellowing. You'll actually get a tackiness to the feel to it. Oh. Where these will be a little bit smoother. As they start to ripen and get a deeper color, you'll just get that tackiness to it. Oh, okay. It'll be a little more sticky, and those are the ones you want to go for. Now, this one, I always have trouble picking the best corn. What, what should I be looking for on this one? Well, you just want to find one that's got nice green coloring to it, where the silks aren't real moldy or beaten up. Okay. Um, ideally, you want to just rip that thing open, though, and check. Make sure, make sure you got full maturity all the way through to the corn. Okay. That it's not immature and underdeveloped. Um, 
But, but corn, one thing about corn is once it's harvested, it instantly is turning from sugar to starch. Oh. So you want to get it in the fridge right away at home. Oh, you don't okay. want to store corn too long at home. You want to eat it right away. So this is my personal favorite, strawberries. I love strawberries, but how do I pick a good basket of strawberries? Well, you definitely want to look for one that doesn't have any mold. You want to always turn them over. Look okay, good, I do around, that. That's you good. You know, shake them around a little bit. Make sure you don't see any that are getting fuzzy, because sometimes that happens. You'll get one strawberry that's bad. Again, you know, it'll kind of infest the whole package, but you want them nice, shiny, firm, no mold. Okay, good, good, good. One thing that a lot of people will do is take these home and wash them up right away. But hmm. really, if you're not going to use them that very first day, you'll want to put them in the refrigerator just like this in the container and then take them out and wash them as you need them. Oh, really? Because that water, that moisture can tend to cause a little bit of mold to start growing That's on not them. Good. So you definitely don't want that. So wash them as you need them. So how long would you store these in the fridge, would you say? You know, some people will stretch it three, four, five, six days, but you definitely right. don't want to stretch it beyond six or seven days. Too much longer than that, yeah, right? It's going to push the limits of it. And when in doubt, if you have any questions, ask your local produce manager. The man, produce right? manager that's on, on duty, they're the experts in the, in the field. They know what's going on. They know what's coming in local and good right then and there. Good. Always want to ask them what's going on. Good. You guys know. Okay. Thanks. Well, that is going to do it for the show today. If you have questions about the stories you've seen today, check out our website at californiacountry.org. Also, check out our Facebook site if you get a second. We've got some brand new recipes on there for you. And we will see you again next week on California Country. See you then.